Today we're checking out a modern take on old world Italian cooking. Executive chef Kristen Selene. Did I even get anywhere close to You were to perfect. It? Totally. <laughs> now let me butcher this. From Bacca di Bacco. Bocca di Bacco. Bingo. There you go. Uh -huh. A restaurant which is opening its fourth location tomorrow in Chelsea. Way to go. Wow. Is here to you. prepare something special for us. Good to have you back. First up. This is great that you guys keep growing. Yes, fourth yeah. location. It's going to be the flagship location, over 400 seats. <gasps> oh, huge. my goodness. Doubles as special event space, weddings, everything of that sort. So we're really wow. excited about it. And you're wow. 22 years old. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> fourth time Slightly to charm, older. right? Exactly. Well, now, you're going to make something for us today. So tell us about this. This is monkfish? So this is monkfish, exactly. And it's actually a really mild, um, not too fishy flavor. And it's a really firm, succulent texture, which is very close to that of lobster. You okay be considered oh. like the poor man's lobster. <laughs> okay. So to get this started, you guys can help me. We're just going to salt and pepper both sides. Okay. And then we are going to want to sprinkle on some flour. Okay. So we are making monkfish livernese, which is basically just the preparation of it. So okay. in this pan, I have um, like heated up some oil. garlic and olive yeah. oil. Exactly, yeah. So we can just pat on that flour. That's it? That's all you do? Yep, salt and oh, pepper wow. yeah. and a little bit of flour. That's all you do, okay. Huh. Here. When I make monkfish, it's exactly <laughs> the exact same way. And then we're going to place these into the pan. Okay, and you just did a little bit of garlic oil. Uh, garlic, garlic and olive oil. And olive oil. Exactly, okay. yeah. And we want to get these to brown on both sides for about two to three minutes. Okay. Well, now, I typically don't, I order a lot of fish, mm -hmm. and I don't see monkfish a lot on the menu. So right. why is that? Monkfish, um... The problem is it's kind of used to be considered almost like a peasant type of fish. Really? But now more and more it's coming out because, like, they are do consider it the poor man's lobster. Right. Because of the taste and because how it um, absorbs so much flavor, it's um it's making a comeback, I would say, definitely. Yeah, you said it was pretty versatile. Yeah. Like, you could do a lot of different things You can things do a lot with mm -hmm. it. So. And, I mean, it was a hit for Tony Shalhoub. Yeah, so, my God. <laughs> it's good. So how long is this going to take if I'm making it at home? At this at home, you're just going to um, basically brown these on both sides for two to three minutes and then to start your sauce okay we pour in here a little uh, dry white wine and we're gonna let that reduce down to about half and okay. you want to get that really all there in the middle so you get all the flavors uh, and you, coming you did out. that even though the uh, we haven't flipped them yet right right you exactly okay. yeah you can okay. do that while it's in there okay. and you're gonna you know evaporate some of that wine and I'll point to some of our dishes over oh. here yeah, also. Yeah, you brought over some lovely dishes I as know well. you're doing the vegan challenge. Yes, I am. So I have some spaghetti squash you're for you. You're the best. <laughs> I love you, Kristen. So we have spaghetti squash with great. a little fresh tomato, some olives in there. Just plain mm. and simple garlic, mm. olive oil, salt, and pepper. A great Italian spin on taste. spaghetti squash. Mm -hmm. Now, as we have this going here, I'll pour in some of our fresh tomatoes. By really the way, good. when she poured in that wine, what the smell is just terrific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here we add some fresh tomatoes. Mm, that's nice. That's really good. Mm hmm To get that going. And it's such a simple dish. You know, it's really, really easy to do. You can whip this together within like 15 minutes and have it on your table. Is this a flaky fish? Uh, no, actually, this is going to be more of a firm texture. It is good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's, it's good. a poor man's lobster. lobster. Uh -huh. Exactly. So yeah. just imagine you're eating lobster. And you're poor. <laughs> Basically. And which is funny, <laughs> if you ever see a full monk monkfish, you'll understand why you, it will never be served whole in a restaurant because... Is it not a good looking fish? It's like a sea monster. Really? So really? you only want the tail of the fish because that's the meaty part. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so now you're going to add in some so olives. Now, and... Exactly. So mm -hmm. now we're adding in really generous with the chopped parsley. Okay. Kalamata olives. I love how fresh and how mm -hmm. few ingredients this has, but the smell, it smells amazing. And for a little spice, we're going to add in some red pepper flakes. Ooh, whoa, whoa, let whoa, me whoa. throw some of those yeah. on my spaghetti squash. Um, by the way, there was a little kick in this thing uh -huh. on the way down. <laughs> I love it. Oh. Wow. And what's good about spaghetti squash, too, is you can really do so much with it. You can. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what I have a problem with at home is um, seeding it. Like, you get the seeds out, then how do I how do I make it into the spaghetti squash? Do you just grate it? Yeah, so make sure that you're scooping out all the seeds yeah. beforehand, and then you put it in the oven, and then you should literally, when it comes out 30 minutes later, take a fork, and it should just... That's how you do mm -hmm. it. Oh, yes, my gosh, with a fork. I was take grating the fork it. Down. No. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now tell <laughs> us about fork. this other dish that you brought here as well. So that is our um, stagione salad, which is basically... 
basically just a warm seasonal vegetable Stagione. salad. Stagione and salad. And it's served in a Parmesan crust bowl with okay. a little ricotta on minute, top. That's here. You wow. Take and you can do that. Them. You can change up the vegetables for any season. Um, we toss that with a little, um, you know, balsamic reduction and a little lemon vinaigrette <laughs> on top. Mm -hmm. And it's really nice. Wow. No, we can't take grill anyway. Not easy to pick up with a fork. So now quickly, you mentioned before you're opening your fourth restaurant. Fourth location. We're having a grand opening party tomorrow night, Tuesday and Wednesday. It's uh, down in Chelsea on 7th Avenue and What's 21st. What's the menu look like? The menu will be the same of all the Boca de Baca. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, so we'll have that same continuity throughout. And now, I'm sorry, I cut you off. It's Chelsea and it's West... It's on uh, 7th Avenue and 21st Street. Perfect. Okay, mm -hmm. so then everybody knows where to find you. And then also... Um, you're going to be doing catering as well. Yeah, we're doing off-site catering. We've opened up um, catering division that I'm running, so I'm very excited. Look at well, you. I'm exciting she's things so happening. And she has a TV show, yeah. by the way, guys. Yes, tonight, yeah. Kitchen Casino airs on the Food Network. Yay! Very excited. Well, that's going to keep How cooking. How do you do it all? Kristen <laughs> Soleni, yeah, go ahead. Please try this some. Thank good. you so much for being here. The newest outpost of the Boca de Baco restaurant. It opens tomorrow in Chelsea. Check it out. We're going to put up this recipe for the great monkfish. It smells awesome. Is this it, though? On our website. It done? Go for it, guys. Sure. Check out our website, wlnytv.com slash the couch, and uh, we'll put that recipe up for you. Thank you so thank much for you. being here so this morning. Here. And all thank you for feeding us. Thank you.